Hi there and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. I am Byron. Let's talk to... Balan. You're here about food. Take it up with that bleeding runt by the chantry. I got other gear to sell. You're out of food? A whole mess of refugees come in and leave near every night. All have hungry bellies, sad tails, and mementos for barter. I sold that bleeding merchant outside about half my lot or two weeks back, and now he's charging outrageous sums for all my food. Don't worry about him, I took care of it. You did? Well, I don't know what to say to that. Thanks? Show me what you've got. Um... Lightning rod. Oh, that's rather expensive. Okay, let's take a look around first. Um, so we have um, Liliana now. She's a rogue. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Of the seventh level. Why is everybody higher leveled than I am? She's a bard, the rogue. Okay. What do you have? Song of Valor, Rogue 30 Fighting, Below the Belt, Death Hands. Two actually, that's good. And apparently you're good with a bow. This is a dagger. Could we give you another dagger? We could. But you have a bow too. You don't have a bow. You need a bow. Do you have a bow? You don't have a bow. We need two bows. You're here about food. Take it up with that bleeding runt by the chantry. I got other gear to sell. Know of any web paying work on Lothering? Check the chanter's board by the chantry. There's good jobs, huh? Um, <clears throat> I don't suppose you know anything about uh, poison? Poison? I have dabbled in such things. I figured if I kept asking, I'd find someone. I'd pay good coin for some simple poison. Something to slow them beasties down or make them think twice. Any idea where I could get ingredients? Well, there's herbs in the north wood. As for other stuff, look around town. Some refugees just left things behind to travel faster. I don't really know what you need though. I, I might have some in stock too. Show what you've got. Um, so, weapon wise. A longbow. Who could have that? 22 dexterity. Who has 22 dexterity and 26 strength? Poisonous proposition. A suitable poison with three flasks of venom should do the trick. Who actually has poison? You have poison. Hey, come on girl, you can do it. Venom, I need toxin. I don't have toxin. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at your character. You have a dexterity of 22, that's enough for the bow. You have a dexterity of... 17. It's not enough for the other bow, but you have a strength of 26. That should be enough for the crossbow. Any luck with that poison? Or you're here to see my stock? Well, let's show what you got. So, um, 
we buy a short bow and we buy a long bow. Don't seem to have toxins. So we don't need that. So let's see. You could equip this one. Very good. And you could equip this one. Could you use this one? Yeah, you okay. can. But a heavy helmet, come on, not for you. Uh, well, it's the only one we have, so... Okay. Do we have arrows too? Ice arrows and fire arrows. That's not too bad. But maybe we save them for a special occasion. What do you have? Magic stuff. Just a regular one. Okay. Blackstone liaison. As I live and breathe, you're the Grey Warden everyone's been talking about. So, is there something I can do for you? I represent the Blackstone Irregulars. We're a mercenary company that fell on hard times after the war with Orle. I'm sure you know that times are getting worse every day. With your help, the Irregulars could be of use to Ferelden once more. How can I be of service? Our leaders thought you might be willing to help. Each of our posts in Ferelden will contain letters addressed to you. Unlike most who work with us, you're getting letters straight from Railnor and Tauran, our leaders. I hope this tells you how highly the Irregulars regard the Grey Wardens. I'll take a look. Thank you. When you've completed a mission, just return to me or any of our members stationed at an Irregulars post. We'll make sure your efforts are rewarded. Make us blessings light your path. Okay. What is that? A letter written in a careful script addressed to you. To the in 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 inimit inimitable Grey Worm. Your deeds have spread since the tragedy of Ostaka, and I find myself in need of one such as you. I am Realnor, captain of the venerable Blackstone Irregulars, and I hope to win your trust. The Irregulars have come on hard times since the war with Olay, but I have fought to improve their reputation. Gone are the days of my father's shady deals with unscrupulous nobles in Denerim. No, I have trained a guild filled with honorable men ready to fight for Vrelden, and I am proud to say that I have seen your own Grey Wardens as a sort of model. We are not perfect. My own son advocates a move back to the more lucrative, lucrative way my father ran the guild, but we are steadfast. It is in this context that I ask for your help and I promise we will reward you accordingly. Should you be willing, please find letters in this box and others like it all over the land and carry out the requests therein. For this matter, consider requests from my son as if they came from myself. And thank you again from the bottom of my heart, whether you choose to assist us or not. You are doing the Maker's work, Walden, and I am honored to work with you. 
Relno. This letter is marked with the seal of the Blackstone Regu Regulars. Okay. What else is new? Liliana. In the cloister away from the fast and the flurry of the cities I have found peace. And in that stillness I could hear the Maker. A lay sister of the Chant, you can beat the stuffing out of trained mercenaries would be notable enough, but one who also claims to have been sent to fight the Darkstorm born by the Maker himself is unusual to say the least. She joined Alistair and April in Lothal Ring and insisted that she would prove useful. I mean, she's a rogue, she surely is useful. At least as a chest opener. What's in here? Scraping the barrel. My friend, there are a number of people who would pledge who pledge to aid the Blackstone Regulars in times of need. Those times are now. Here we will find three letters of conscription. Deliver them to the people listed below and return to the regular regulars for your payment. Should any of these people refuse, do what you must to get to honor get them to honor their oaths. Uh, Donald Garrison in Radcliffe, Petter Gritch in Lovering, and Vernal Bairn in Denerim, your friend. Theoran. And Dereliction of Duty. My friend, the Irregulars require a trusted agent to track down and deal with the Surtus. Do this and you will be rewarded. The Desertors took with them valuable supplies crucial to the Irregulars' future as a supplier of martial services. Deal with these wastes of space as you see fit and bring the supplies back as proof that a problem has been dealt with. We will ask no questions as to your methods or the final condition of the deserters. Use your own discretion. You will find them in the following locations. Samael, Lake Kellenhardt, Lace and Denerim, Faunus, Frostback Mountains. Your friend Theron. I accept that too. And that's that. What now? Wait. Did we already had that? No, this is not. This is a new one. Blackstone Letter of Conscription. Dear friend, you are receiving this letter because you or someone else placed your name on an article of conscription, thereby pledging your life to the Blackstone Originalist. How can somebody else do that? That's wrong. The war looming on all fronts, the regulars must build their numbers. We are forced to call upon those who have sworn their assistance to make good on these oaths. Say farewell to your friends and family. While you may return to them, you must prepare them for the possibility that this will be your last day together. Your sacrifice is appreciated. Theron. How can somebody else pledge my life? That's weird. If I have an enemy, I don't kill him. I just pledge his life and he has to go to the old good war apparently. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Um, yeah. And that's apparently it, right? Anything else to be had here? There's a barn. I just play what the innkeeper asks. We need his coin to travel north. Whatever. Maybe I should actually talk to Liliana. Talk to all my party members, not to her. Yes. What do you know of this place? Lothering? I think it started as a settlement by the river, and then grew when it became the place where two roads met. There are always people in Lothering, but many are just passing through. Let's talk about something else. Yes? Uh, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. This vision of yours... I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain. But I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope 
and beauty. Have faith. This made you want to help me? In my dream I fell. Or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? The Chantry says the Maker has left us. He's still here. I hear him in the wind and the waves. I feel him in the sunlight that warms my skin. I know what the Chantry says about the Maker, and what should I believe? What I feel in my heart, or what others tell me? Believe what feels right to you, Liliana. Thank you. It's nice to find someone who agrees. I know what I know, and no one will ever make that untrue. And she approves. Very nice. Yes? Uh, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Yes, they tend to be self-righteous. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. I prefer your ideas to the idea of the Chantry. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Mm, okay, that's quite you know you know New Testament like uh, uh, beliefs. Um. Yes. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lothring's chantry? What is meant by someone like me? They don't teach you how to fight in the cloister, do they? Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. What did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Okay. There's more to Liliana than had ever been apparent at Lothring, however. She spent much of her time as a bard in Olay, a minstrel assassin, a spy employed by the nobles of Valroyo in the elaborate games of intrigue. Oh, there's more to her than meets the eye, that is sure. Yes. Well... Here I am. You were a traveling minstrel. Do you have any tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know, and their pride they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, 
the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. No, any stories from Ole? Of course, Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. That sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Please continue. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Did she win the tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Why didn't she fight back? That's terrible. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Wait again to talk spawn? Chantry law says it is man's pro in ages Yeah. We already had any that. land that was touched by the taint okay. became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the dark spawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Flemeth? No, I met a Flemeth in the Kokari Wilds. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. She didn't really introduce herself as such. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. Maybe you should they ask also Morgan. say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth was once beautiful? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of High Ever, Conobar, and he took her oh, yes, for his I read wife. That already. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, 
and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. What happened then? Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the chasing tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyava, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chasing men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. There was another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know anything about the Dalish? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. It didn't last. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. They were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Do you know anything about Andraste? Andraste was the Maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride but andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him instead she beseeched the maker to return to his people once more so earnest was her plea that the maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him and this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, the chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance, 
as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tivinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tivinta. Why did the Maker not why did the Maker not save her with his power? I have thought on this too. Did he withdraw his sight from her at that moment? Where were all the powers he bestowed upon her? This question has come to me many times, and I have no answer. Perhaps there was no way for Andraste to return to the Maker but through her death. We will never know for sure. Let's just move on then. And she approves. And that concludes this video. Lots of talking. Maybe we'll get some things done in the next one. I don't know. We shall see. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.